consistently supported and secure. We're about to do a guided meditation around that because sometimes we don't feel consistently supported and secure, right? You know, there are many types of traumas that can throw our root chakra out of alignment. And when we don't feel secure, when we don't feel safe, there is generally some misalignment, imbalance in the root chakra. So, you know, the one trauma that I tend to hear talked about the most is the trauma of neglect. And we talk about it so casually a lot of the time. I think because so many people have some form of neglect in their history, whether it's the neglect of a parent or the neglect of a lover or spouse. And that creates what I consider to be an identity wound because not being cared for, particularly by people who are supposed to care for us, we have a contract with them. that they are supposed to care for us. It makes us create stories about ourselves. It makes us decide we are or aren't something. So what I'd like to do with you today is to just guide you through a series of statements. Some might be affirmations, some might just be declarations. Um, Definitely this whole thing will probably be a form of activation for you in order to help you feel consistently supported and secure, at least begin to feel that way. You know, it's a long-standing thing, uh, framing life from a place of will it happen or won't it? Will they be there or won't they? Because that's where it comes from. If there's a habit of, let's just use a parent because it's the easiest example that a lot of people who have neglect in their history can relate to because it typically starts with a parent before it becomes something that we experience with a lover but that neglect from the parent frames the way we look at life it imprints on us again an idea of who we are and how we fit into the world and how life responds to us what we get from the universe, at least how we see what we get from the universe or God or goddess, whatever it is we believe in. We frame it from a place of, it may be there for me or it may not. There's a lack of trust that is the result. And that lack of trust is because of not feeling consistently supported and secure. So, you know, you can listen to this with your eyes closed or open, lying down, sitting, walking, doing chores, multitasking, alone or with someone else, I always like to create my uh, transformative audio in a way that you can use it at all times, at any time, I should say, whether you are busy or not, whether you like sitting still or absolutely just can't do it. Hard for me personally. So (laughs) that's probably where that comes from. Okay. So get yourself ready whatever ready means for you. And let's begin to think about yourself and what it would mean for you to feel consistently supported and secure. Let's start by bringing to mind some goddesses that we associate with nurturing, with motherhood, with support, with care. So that would be the goddess Gaia. That would be Yemoja. That would be Demeter. Those are three off the top of my head. Take a second and bring to mind goddesses that you are aware of, that you know, that are connected to the idea of motherhood. Hestia, the goddess of hearth and home. 
And then think of our general idea that we talk about often of Mother Earth. For some, that is the goddess Gaia. And just imagine yourself being enveloped by this goddess energy. It could be the goddess Shakti. And their energy surrounds you in such a way that it feels like a warm hug. Imagine yourself like a baby who is swaddled in blankets and held closely to the bosom of her mom or grandma, maybe even her father. But for you in this moment right now, you are swaddled by the energy of goddess and goddess love. And this makes you secure. Goddess energy cares for all things, nurtures all things. There is not a part of the universe that isn't under her domain. And that includes you. Imagine going through your life every day knowing there's this supporting presence beside you, over your head, beneath you, in front of you, guiding your way. Imagine knowing that any time you had a question, you could ask this energy to help you find the answer. Any time you had a need and couldn't see your way to how to get that need met, asking that energy for support. And she would answer. She would be there like the mother who loves like the mother who can be counted on. She does not judge you for your questions or your needs, your desires. However you pose them, she hears and responds. Sometimes her response may take a while for you to be able to decipher it, only because her language of love is still so new to you. Eventually, you always feel if not sense, if not hear, the guidance you are seeking. Athena, the goddess of wisdom, very much has a maternal quality to her, while she is also the goddess of war. Aphrodite, the goddess of love, has a caring, nurturing heart. It might even be associated with the sign of cancer, which is the nurturer, the mother of the zodiac. Don't quote me on that. Y'all know I like to say I'm not, I am not an astrologer. But Aphrodite's message is often one of self-love more than it is one of romantic love. And self-love is a reflection of having been loved by the maternal, by the mother energy. And the more and more you get into the habit of asking, waiting, listening for the answer from this beautifully maternal goddess energy that is here to support you consistently, the more you'll get used to hearing her voice or feeling her presence. And so it'll soon start to happen more quickly with less time in between the question and her answer. Imagine this energy helping you build the life you want for yourself, helping you create the types of relationships you want to have with others, helping you remember to take good care of yourself and put yourself in your needs first. And yes, those needs also include the financial. The mother energy can help you earn what you deserve to earn, can help you save in ways that make you feel, again, secure, can help you decipher what to invest in so that you can grow the income that you have, 
can help you open up conversations that you need to have with yourself about your earning, spending, saving, and investing habits and can help guide you in a direction that includes choices that are more beneficial for you, more fruitful for you, and more supportive of you and the kind of life you want to live in the long run. The same goddess energy has the ability to see into your heart and to hear again without judgment that which you share with her from your spirit, from your soul. When you feel down, when you feel scared, when you feel anxious, when you feel angry, she is big enough to encompass all of that and to let you express all of that so that you own it, so that it is part of you and you can feel secure knowing that it is okay for you to feel the things you feel. See, that is part of being secure. Self-acceptance. Accepting all of the self. So none of it has to become shadow. Seeing yourself without judgment, goddess energy is very good at helping you see yourself without judgment because she views you without judgment. She will not abandon you. She will not leave you. She will not neglect you because you did not meet a standard, because you did not live up to an expectation, because you made a choice different than the one that was suggested for you. No, 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 no. That is the key to security in the support. It's that the support is there no matter what. It is not intermittent. It is not behavior-based. It is not conditional. And the great thing about goddess energy is it takes many forms. There are many, many goddesses, as I know you all know, and each of them may connect with you in different ways depending on your need at the time depending on the question that you have, depending on what you want to see or not allowing yourself to see. Having this connection to this beneficent energy, this maternal spirit, this feminine strength, This can help you begin to see yourself as consistently supported and feel more secure in the choices you make, in the life you live, in your ability to change your mind if you ever need to do that. Being able to trust yourself because you know you are not alone and you are worthy and you will not be abandoned or neglected because you are worthy. And knowing that you are worthy is the thing that makes you feel the most consistently supported and secure because you are the one energy, the one being, the one personality that you can always count on if you let yourself. Trust yourself. Trust the divine feminine energy. Trust the earth which is built to support you. Trust the universe. Go forward in your day or evening whenever you happen to be listening to this. This one is probably a really good one to do right before you go to sleep or as you are sleeping to hear it over and over and have it imprinted on that subconscious mind that you are now and forevermore consistently supported and secure. Before I say goodbye to you, I want to remind you that the root chakra is the energy center that is connected to our sense of safety and our sense of security. And if you have been feeling insecure or afraid, even just anxious lately, you might need to do a little bit of rebalancing of that root chakra. There are a couple of ways you can do this. I wanna give them to you really quickly. 
okay? So one of them is to take your forefinger and your middle finger and your thumb and close them together. with your ring finger and pinky splayed out. And you can hold that right beside you, whether you're sitting or standing, for as long as you want. And as you do it, meditate on the phrase, I am consistently supported and secure. to that as far as again connecting with and realigning that root chakra squeezing that bottom part of your body you know what I'm talking about that area between the groin and the tailbone to squeeze it it's very much like doing kegels if you're familiar with that if you're not look it up <laughs> and doing this both of these things together with your feet flat on the ground again whether you're standing or you're sitting this is going to help activate and rebalance that root chakra. And as you know, I say often in my content, there are yoga practices that you can find online to help you with the specific chakras that you feel need alignment at any time. So go to YouTube, our good old friend, and just type in root chakra yoga practice or root chakra yoga. That is sufficient. Drumming music helps you feel connected to the earth and helps you again balance that root chakra dancing it does not have to be good dancing but moving that body and in particular from your hips down really get those legs moving sway those hips use that pelvis that is a great way to activate and stimulate that root chakra even jumping up and down you know if you happen to have some friends and you want to do some double dutch that's another good one and then one of the ones that is, I think, possibly one of the oldest practices is grounding, literally grounding. So that's going outside and sitting on the earth, walking around barefoot again, feet touching the earth. And by earth, we do not mean sidewalks and asphalt. We are talking specifically about the turf so that's dirt or grass be careful that you do it in a place that you know to be safe not so, like a city park is a little bit tricky because there could be glass out there but really connecting with mother earth the earth spirits the nature spirits in that way barefooted or seated on the ground directly now, by directly, it can be with a towel. Just putting that out there. You can sit on a towel. Just a thin layer of fabric between you and the earth is perfectly okay for, for you to still get the effects of grounding. These are some ideas I invite you to try. As for our meditation today, we are done. I hope you have found it useful. I hope you also enjoyed it. Thank you, as usual, for meditating with me, and I will see you next time.